Hey, this is Dr. Yates here in Chicago, and of course this is Cindy who works with me. Uh, and what we're doing today, we're talking about platelet-rich plasma. A lot of people come to us all the time and they talk about, well, PRP this, PRP that, why is PRP good? So today we're just going to break it down to just essential things you should know about PRP. We're going to inject it on our patient Marcus here. Now the first thing you have to know is who's the appropriate patient to inject PRP on. So we've examined Marcus, gone through physical examination and so forth and so on, and he's an ideal patient because of his pattern. He has miniaturization throughout the vertex and kind of miniaturization throughout the mid scalp and the front, although he still has a lot of hair. A lot of guys these days don't want to do Propecia, they don't want to do Rogaine for various reasons, so they have a natural option doing PRP. The hope that we would have with Marcus here is to rejuvenate that hair in the vertex, that little miniaturized hair, transform that into what we call terminal hair, and just make his hair look thicker and stop the shedding process. So that's what we're looking to do with Marcus. From my experience of doing PRP five or six years, I would say 60 to 70% of people respond in some manner, meaning either they stop shedding or we'll see actual better hair or regrowth of hair. I've hardly seen any patients that, that did not get any response from PRP. So let's talk about what is PRP, and we'll do it pretty quick because you know we can get pretty detailed, but we really don't need to. So PRP, how it starts off, we draw, Cindy, how much blood did you draw today? Um, I drew 60 mLs. 60 mLs, okay. So we take 60 cc's of blood, and you might say, why are we gonna take some blood? Because in the blood system, Platelets are part are a component of the blood system. Their primary directive is when there's injury to the body, to a blood vessel, platelets go there like little mentos and fill that hole and prevent a person from bleeding to death. That's called hemostasis, that's well known. So we know platelets direct hemostasis. The part we're using platelets for, once they're activated, they release all these nutrients, all these growth factors that helps the body repair itself. That's what we're interested in doing. So platelets have a plethora, that's a, that's a big word. That just means that there's a whole lot of these growth factors that once we inject these growth factors into the scalp, the hope is that these growth factors will go to the injured hair follicles and cause other nutrients. This is called uh, kind of hormonal stimulation for all the of cytokines for these other nutrients to go to that injured follicle and make a better hair follicle. Okay, so I know that said a lot, but here I'll just break it down. So PRP means platelet-rich plasma. So when we take out blood, the blood has three things in it. It has red cells, it has white cells, and it has platelets. In medical school, instead of red, white, and blue, platelets, it's red, white, and P for platelets. So, and you can see this here, this is the blood that we took from Marcus. We took 60 cc's of blood, we put it in a centrifuge, and this is how it settles out. Here's the plasma, okay? The plasma is just the liquid kind of containing uh, nutrients that form the blood. Uh, you can see this little layer in the middle is the white blood cell layer and the platelet layer, and below that is a little of the red cell layer. So what we do is, we draw out the plasma. You can see that, show that. So we, we don't want the plasma when we inject this into a scalp. We want pure platelets. So we take all this away and we go down and we get just this little what we call buffy coat. That's where all the platelets live. That's where some of the stem cells live, okay? So we just get from 60 cc's of, of whole blood where you have red, white, and blue and plasma, we get about how many cc's do we use again? Ten. About 10 cc's of platelet-rich plasma that we're gonna inject into his scalp. Now, the other question is how many platelets do you need to be effective? There's controversy about that, but it seems the literature is pretty clear you need at least a million platelets, maybe a million five. But over a million five, it doesn't do any good, or below 500,000, uh, uh, platelets, it doesn't seem to be effective either. What's a normal platelet count in your blood? Usually 250,000 platelets if you just want to round it off, about 250,000. So we're concentrating with our system his platelets by a factor of four to five to get up what we need to get. So 
that's important that you want to be have at least one million like Austin Power, one million dollars you want one million at least in that range of platelets so when you look at your system you know you want to make sure you're in that range the other thing is we also when we take the platelets you'll get some white blood cells we get instead of neutrophils and neutrophils as we know cause a lot of inflammation we get monocytes you know so these aren't granulocytes that cause a lot of inflammation in the scalp so it's a good deal to get these kind of white blood cells uh, with the platelet-rich plasma so what we do next Cindy has numbed up the entire scalp and uh, we do it with a regional block around the scalp. So, Marcus, you feeling okay? Yes. Okay, so we're gonna run through what we do. Now, the other question is, how often should you repeat these injections? Usually we're finding with our patients that every eight months that a lot of them will just come back to us and say, hey, my hair is getting a little thinner, starting to shed, so forth and so on. So they're just on their own biological clock. So we usually, suggest that patients repeat PRP between 8 and 12 months. Now a lot of other doctors have other regimens where they do three uh, initial treatments of PRP, maybe weeks apart, months apart. Um, so everybody has what they call their secret sauce or their formula. But this is our formula. We found with our system delivering at least a million platelets um, that are activated with all these growth factors that usually around 8 months is the time where it needs to be repeated. Does it have to be done all the time? Yes, it has to be done every year if you want to maintain what you have. So, here we go. So, put on some gloves. Can I get a mask too, yes. Cindy? And we're going to go through this rather quickly to show you how this is done. So, the things you, you have to realize, the reason you inject platelets into the scalp is why, is, are because platelets release growth factors which go to the injured hair follicle and re-stimulate that hair follicle to make better hair by what's called signaling or hormonal signaling. Meaning that these growth factors that we inject under his scalp cause other nutrients that the hair follicle needs to be attracted like stem cells to the hair follicle to repair the stem cell. I'm sorry, to repair the hair follicle. So here we go. So I always start up at the hairline and the scalp's numb so he shouldn't feel this. And we kind of go on one centimeter areas. And really, Mark, is this hurting you at all? No. It should not hurt. I've heard from a lot of patients and they had PRP, they were like screaming and so forth. That shouldn't be the case. So we just kind of go around, move about one centimeter and inject a little aliquot of PRP. Oh. He said, ooh, there, but we'll keep going. <laughs> if anything gets really bad, let me know. So we keep going, keep going. Going, keep going. Okay, Cindy, I put a little bit more lidocaine right here in the vertex. Okay. And we use lidocaine with epinephrine sparingly, but you have to numb the scalp because if they're screaming and jumping, it's not going to be a good day for anyone. So, again, like one centimeter increments. You put like a little tuberculin wheel. This area I'd expect to see a lot of progress and we're going to follow up with a follow up video in about six months or if it happens faster we'll uh, shoot it earlier. And a lot of people always say, oh I need more PRP here. But the blood supply to the scalp is so rich we're only fooling ourselves to think if I inject PRP here I'm almost confident that PRP is going to go to his whole scalp because the blood supply to the scalp is so rich. So just because we're injecting it here doesn't mean that all these uh, growth factors are going to stay in that place. So again, from one big tube of blood, we get uh, approximately 10 cc's, which are these aliquots here, uh, of platelet-rich plasma. And we do the same thing again. The area that they're most concerned with, we will spend more time there. And why is PRP really good? It's 
Well, it's really good because we're injecting his growth factors from his body back where he needs it. Uh, it's called biologic therapy. It's called, and it's actually the best because you're giving the person what they had. This is all of his doing. It's you know nothing that we get from a lab, anything like that. This is his natural healing system that we're re-injecting. A lot of other disciplines like uh, plastic surgery, wound therapy, a lot of other, and orthopedics use a lot of PRP, again, to help with wound healing. But I think if you're gonna have PRP done, you should at least go somewhere where people understand why it works. And I'm a firm believer in PRP in that I give PRP to my patients. Uh, my staff injects PRP on me about every six to eight months. So I'm a firm believer in PRP and the efficacy of PRP. And I see a lot of people on the internet will say on different sites they tried PRP and it was a waste of money and so forth and so on. I don't think anything, kind of a four by four, I don't think anything that, Mark, is you okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. That has a, a chance to help hair loss that has been proven with you know biological research would be a waste of money. Maybe it doesn't work on everybody, but you have to say what are your options. So I think that you're cheating yourself if you don't explore all the uh, options for hair loss. Because more people respond to PRP than not. And how will you know if you re respond if you don't do it? So, and, it, and it's not that simple. Hair loss is a very complex problem. Very, it's, you know, most of it's genetic. It's actually beyond the scope of most practitioners, you know, that have figured out what causes hair loss. So, we're kind of chasing our tail with hair loss, but there's no downside, I believe, to getting PRP. Who should not get PRP? People that have an active infection. So you don't want to inject infection or bacteria that might be in one part of the body into their scalp. So somebody with active infection, somebody with metastatic cancer or active cancer, you should not give PRP to. But other than that, uh, I think this is a great tool to achieve, you know, regeneration of hair with natural biologics and you can do it at a frequency that's pretty manageable. So you see no screaming, no swelling, everything's good. So after this video, I want to make sure everybody will know if, they, if someone asks you, well, what does PRP do? Basically, you know, just so you know, if you take away one thing, uh, PRP, the platelet-rich plasma, has growth factors which are injected into the scalp, which helps the hair follicle attract the right nutrients so it replaces the miniaturized hair. So... It's growth factors. What we're injecting into the scalp are growth factors, and we do get some stem cells with this PRP preparation. That's what's, that's what's doing it. It's growth factors. And the other word to remember is the way it works is by cell signaling. And I know that's a pretty advanced concept, but cell signaling means that one type of cell in an area calls to the playground all these other cells to come play and actually all these cells that are needed to repair a, a wounded hair follicle to come to the neighborhood and play. That's called cell signaling. So we know that all these growth factors cause cell signaling. So it's just not the growth factor that does the trick. The growth factor goes in the neighborhood, calls all these other friends that are needed to repair the injured hair follicle into the neighborhood and to work on these injured hair follicles. So that's how it's thought that it works. So growth factors, cell signaling, very safe. Repeat it at least every eight months. Some doctors do it every three months. Whatever your doctor suggests, that's up to him or her. But that's our protocol here. I believe it works. I do it myself. Almost everybody in my staff does it. Um, I don't think that there's anybody over 35 that, 
their hair isn't thinning a little bit and would not want to do it. So we do it all the time. So any questions, email us or give us a call. We're here in Chicago. It's Dr. Yates and Cindy. Mark, is you okay? Yes. Patient's fine. See you soon. <laughs>